Good evening, everyone. This is Michael Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 8th, 2021, recorded around 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. A lot to talk about this evening, including the potential for two tropical cyclones to be forming in the Atlantic Basin over the next five days. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon as the sun is setting this evening. Again, we are watching two tropical waves out there. We have Invest Area 94L and Invest Area 93L, both of these systems with a moderate shot at developing over the next couple of days with the lead wave 94L at a 50% and the secondary wave 93L back to a 40%. We'll be watching both of these waves for potential impacts to our friends here in the Lesser Antilles and Barbados uh, as these systems move off towards the west or northwest over the next five days or so. Another way of representing this is the graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center as of 2 p.m. this afternoon. Again, we have 94L and 93L. Both of these could be posing threats to the islands here over the next few days. And uh, even further beyond that, to portions of the Bahamas, Cuba, uh, Hispaniola, the Dominican Republic could be dealing with threats of 94L here, which is this system right here, uh, over the next several days as it moves west and northwest. And we'll talk about why that's going to be here starting now. So taking a kind of a broader perspective of the uh, loop here, this is kind of centered over 93L, but you can also see 94L over here. So we'll kind of start with 93L first. Again, 93L today has looked rather unimpressive, and it does have some convection with it. The surface center, however, is displaced well over here and is not really allowing for much convection to be pushed on it. And the reason for that is because we have a lot of shear coming out of the northeast and blowing a lot of the convection basically towards the west and uh, off towards kind of the west here and southwest of where the surface sensor actually is located right about here. And we also notice that there's a very big amount of dry stable air, which is kind of represented by the shadow cumulus deck over here. And that is kind of one of the reasons why uh, 93L has not really been able to develop too much today. And again, it's likely to kind of remain that way as it moves west-northwest here. And again, this is going to also have some interactions here from this system over here. This is Invest Area 94L. What we can tell today from 94L is that it actually looks a lot more impressive from what we've seen over the last several days. We actually look here on the satellite image. We actually noticed that today, unlike yesterday, we are starting to get more signs of a low-level circulation that is developing in here. Uh, definitely a lot of mid-level circulation right now, not necessarily down at the low levels. But we are starting to get some of that transition into the low levels. And by uh, the next couple of days or so, again, this is still part of the monsoon trough in through here. But over the next couple of days, as this moves westward, this should begin to try to close off the circulation. We can look at that better here in a zoomed in look at the storm. Again, this is a, a much better uh, representation of what's going on here. Again, we do have uh, the winds here on the kind of the southern side that is still kind of coming out here of the southwest and blowing towards the northeast. And this kind of does represent that we don't have a closed circulation at the surface quite yet. Again, you would uh, like to see uniformly westerly winds here, flipping around to kind of uh, more of the northerly direction here. And then you have to have some easterly winds here and kind of this you know general flow of cyclonic vorticity in through here. We just don't have it at the surface, but we do have it aloft. And again, you can kind of see some of those low level cloud fragments are still moving uh, away and not really converging on an area. So this represents that we don't have a closed circulation at the moment, but with enough convection, this envelope of energy is going to be able to kind of pull itself together. And if we look here at the 850 millibar vorticity map, this is the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. And for context, these reds and whites, that's your high cyclonic spin at your 5,000 foot level. And what we're kind of seeing here again is our three systems. This was old 92L, this is 93L, and this is now 94L. And again, all these systems uh, are moving generally towards the west-northwest here. Generally, all these systems are moving west-northwest. And again, this is our lead wave right here. And we noticed that today, we actually have a little bit more of mid-level vorticity in the atmosphere. And one of the things that's important to kind of notice here 
is notice how this wave is kind of actually spread out. So we have a wave axis that is kind of spread from southwest to northeast. And this, oh, this kind of wave envelope is going to be very important because this northern part of the wave here, uh, as it starts to move generally towards the west and northwest, again, all of this convection up here is kind of important be because, again, this more convection is going to be able to kind of tilt from this, is going to be able to tilt from that, and going to be able to better, better vertically align our systems a little bit better. And because of that, this is how uh, impartial, how we kind of get a closed low level circulation to form. It, it's definitely a very complex process and, and far too much time to explain here. But again, this wave axis here is going to tilt from southwest, uh, from where it is right now, to more vertically aligned where we get a stacking of the low and mid-level circulations once a low-level center does form. And once that does happen, we are going to be able to kind of end up having a more robust convective pocket, more moist pocket in the atmosphere. And that's one of the things that's going against the system right now. If we take a look here at the water vapor uh, imagery here, what we notice is that, again, our system is embedded within a small moist pocket right now. And we look just to the north of here, we have some relatively dry stable air to the north. And this has kind of been one of the things that have really plagued systems in the main development region this year is all this dry air getting entrained into circulations. We've seen it before. We're going to see it again. And again, it's only August 8th going into August 9th. So the, the background environment is still just not quite there yet. Uh, although we will be ramping it up and we're already ramping it up. Uh, but all this dryer to the north is definitely likely to get entrained into the circulation in some meaningful capacity. Now, there's still some discrepancies with that. Again, it, it's still a little bit of a discrepancy whether or not we actually get some of this dry air to kind of be entrained into the circulation or whether or not we actually get a small but robust moist pocket to develop as the storm moves off towards kind of the west-northwest uh, like this. Now, the other thing kind of going against the storm is at least once it enters into the Caribbean here, we're going to be dealing with a little bit of vertical shear, which we'll talk about in a moment, and a little bit of dry air entrainment, but also the land interaction is going to be very crucial because if this does indeed kind of track more so over land, we could be dealing with a system that kind of ends up uh, generally moving over land and not really having time to develop. And that's certainly possible uh, given some of the forecast models today, which we'll talk about in a moment. Now, the upper ocean heat content map, this updated as of this morning. Again, this is basically anywhere from the right end, from uh, the lighter blue colors onwards towards the right of the scale indicates high upper ocean heat content and is formidable for tropical cyclones to work with. Again, right now, our system is actually kind of sitting right about the 55 west or so, kind of in this area, about 55 and about 13, 14 north. So we can kind of just kind of, you know, Peg that here on our system. Again, we're setting roughly at about 55 north, which is kind of like right about there, and about 13 or, or 14 north. So right in about here. And this is where, again, the upper ocean heat content is definitely uh, very sufficient for tropical cyclone genesis and maintenance and strengthening. But again, excuse me, but again, the biggest real problem here is going to be really if this storm or if whatever comes out of this ends up kind of moving over parts here of the islands in the island chain. And if it does so, we're going to have a system that may not be able to coherently, coherently keep intact. And it's going to be hard for much to come out of this if indeed it does run into land interaction. Now, this is one of the things that was shown here very interestingly on the GFS forecast. This is the 18Z run valid for 8 p.m. this afternoon, or 8 p.m. this evening. So valid for just about the 19 minutes from now. And Again, we can kind of see our players on the board right now. We have our systems here. Again, this is uh, 94L, 93L, and the remnants of 92L right here. So our three players are that are on the board. But again, our two that we're focusing on is right about there. And again, like we've been talking about over the last couple of days, you've got just a big mess of the monsoon trough that's breaking down. Now, as for steering components, we have a big ridge of high pressure that is kind of sitting out across the Azores here. And this is, there's a natural weakness in the ridge here. We can kind of see there's an area of low pressure right about here off the coast of the Delve Marva and New Jersey. And this is creating just some weakness in the ridge and an approaching trough here and a trough over here. 
but this has created somewhat of a weakness in this uh, ridge here. So our storms are gaining a little bit more latitude right now. Now, not too much. Again, these are still feeling a lot of the low-level flow that is generally out of the west here from east to west because, again, that's the way the trades are going. And weaker storms generally tend a little bit more towards the west because, again, they're following the low-level flow, which is from east to west. Now, over the next couple of days or so, we notice here on the GFS A50 vorticity that we kind of do get a percolation here. We'll zoom in uh, into the tropical Atlantic sector. We kind of notice, actually, we'll go to the Western Atlantic. There we go. Much better. So we have a system here on the GFS uh, by Tuesday that does look a little bit more like a tropical cyclone, like a bona fide tropical depression at least. Now, our ridge at that point is going to be building in over Bermuda, and we get more of a westerly component to the flow here. And again, a weak storm not being able to generate a, a lot of beta drift will likely head generally westward, kind of west-northwest along that flow. And what we can tell is that it basically, the, at least on this particular run of the GFS, it takes it over Puerto Rico and pretty much over the mountainous train of Hispaniola and eventually finds itself here in the Bahamas by Thursday, uh, just south of the Turks and Caicos. Now, we have a ridge of high pressure here, but we have an approaching trough just up uh, off the screen here, which eventually will begin to erode this ridge and back it towards the east here. Now, in the short term, we get a storm that kind of does almost like an Irma type track where it kind of moves southwest and potentially over the island there of Cuba. And then you get here by Friday. And again, there's just a little bit of vorticity here that is kind of around. And we still have, again, this ridge here and approaching trough over here. And we notice what ends up happening is that after this point, though, we get a storm that tries to develop a very broad system. And this is looking pretty far out in time at this point. But you get a very broad system that ends up kind of developing and moving over parts of Florida at that point. So obviously, at least in the short term, the interest is going to be over the Turks and Caicos or over, I'm sorry, parts of the uh, island chain here, you know, up all the way towards the island chain, Puerto Rico, uh, you know, St. Vincent, you know, the Grenadines even. Uh, even as far south, again, as Trinidad, Tobago may just need to be kind of keeping an eye on this. We'll just kind of see. Uh, but then again, in the longer range, we'll start to watch over there then towards portions like the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, Cuba, and then eventually towards Florida uh, as this kind of eventually moves upward in that direction. Now, if we kind of back this out here and we take a look here at the 200 millibar wind in the atmosphere, and we'll kind of back this up. Now, again, we talked about some of the differences that could be happening here. So we'll back this up. Now, the storm is in a relatively, if we have a storm in here, it's going to be in a relative favorable environment, at least for the next while. We have an upper level anti-cyclone right now that is kind of positioned over parts of the northern Antilles, the greater Antilles through here. However, if you got to take a look here at the 355 uh, Kelvin's uh, cyclonic uh, potential uh, vorticity, this is basically uh, what we call, uh, basically in, in weather terms, we call this negative and positive PV streamers or, or, or potential vorticity. And there's a lot of dynamics that go into this, but the main thing is, here's our system right here. You can kind of see it is wrapped up and it is a co it's a very coherent future in the model, but... This is all a negative phase here. This is basically all negative numbers uh, of positive vorticity. And in this case, it's negative vorticity, which would indicate that there's very low shear in this environment. Negative uh, PV streamers do not create shear, really. However, these positive PV streamers over here in the oranges colors, this represents shear in the atmosphere. So this is just kind of another way of looking at shear. And again, one of the things that's going to be important is as the storm ends up moving uh, towards the west-northwest like this, and again, all of this air over here is shear. You get a sheared environment through here, and this doesn't really change much. Again, we see that the, one of the reasons why the GFS keeps it weak is because we have all this uh, potential vorticity over here that's positive. A big positive in the PV streamer indicates a lot of shear, and which indicates that this area is highly negative for development at this point. Now, 
After this point, however, what happens on the model is, at least in this particular run, we do end up kind of creating a secondary upper level anticyclone, which may be able to better fend off some of this potential vorticity to the north here and the approaching trough here well to the north. And this might be able to allow for a tropical cyclone to develop after that particular time. It's really unsure because, again, a lot is going to hinge on whether or not this system moves actually over land or not. And if you look here at the relative humidity in the middle part of the atmosphere, this ranges from about 700 to 400 millibars in the atmosphere. So about the middle part of the atmosphere. And what we really look for, again, is all of these kind of, you know, green colors in through here. And again, we notice this is 24 hours from today. So by 2 p.m. Monday, uh, again, by 2 p.m. Monday, we're going to be seeing uh, a lot of dry air around our system. That's kind of the best way to really put it. And we notice that, again, we got our system right in through here. But we notice that there's an easy pathway. And because we're going to be dealing with a little bit of shear, uh, we will be entraining some of that circulation into it or some of that dry air into the circulation. If we look here at the average sounding for the environment, we actually notice that the sounding, especially on the western side, is absurdly dry. Now, in the low levels, you get a pretty moist environment, but again, this dry air transplant down to the surface is what really hinders development, and downdraft Cape values are approaching about 700, which indicates that there is some potential for microbursts to occur. And again, typically microbursts are not really a good sign in, in tropical systems. Again, this dry air working its way to the surface creates kind of evaporation of that rain-cooled air, and it kind of spreads out. It diverges in the atmosphere, and you don't really want that. Now, the shear wouldn't be a problem at this point, but again, all this dry air really kind of matters. Now, if we get a smaller, more coherent system, again, this is kind of what the GFS forecasts here. This is by Tuesday, and again, if we kind of look here at the uh, kind of the storm sample, we notice that there is a little bit more relative humidity, very light shear in this atmosphere. And again, we have a more uh, a column here that is definitely more supportive for tropical cyclone genesis and maintenance at this point. Now, this is also something like the H-Wharf kind of suggested. Again, if we kind of look here at the H-Wharf for 92L, again, we can kind of notice that, again, at least in the short term, it does generate this moist pocket and is able to kind of better fend off from this dry air, but eventually it succumbs because, again, we're going to have a little bit of shear uh, later in the period that will force this uh, dry air into the system. But at least in the short term, the h wharf is not all that aggressive and is much more reasonable from some of the other forecasts. And we can kind of look here at the h wharf down the road. Again, it's much of the same. In fact, through 90 hours from now, again, it runs it over Hispaniola and Puerto Rico. So again, now this again has to be monitored in the short term. We don't have a coherent low level center. We will have recon flying in there on Tuesday. So that's good news. But again, the, the H wharf is not necessarily an outlier in this particular case. This is certainly a plausibility for the islands to have a bona fide tropical depression or storm to be moving through that region by Tuesday. So it's important to understand that, again, just because this is going to maybe not be a hurricane, you still need to prepare as, you know, this could still be a tropical storm with sustained winds easily, you know, 30, 40, 45 miles per hour, maybe even a little bit higher. On my high end right now, I'm kind of saying maybe 50 miles per hour on the high end. Again, I really wouldn't bet much over that right now, just for the simple fact that there's still a lot of unknowns. We still have to see how everything kind of plays out. Let's see what happens tonight with our system, and let's see if we can get any uh, sufficient convection to develop. And if that happens, if we can sustain a moist pocket, we may be dealing with a slightly stronger storm on approach to the islands. But right now, uh, probably nothing more than a tropical depression or, or a weak tropical storm. But again, just because it might be weak doesn't mean it cannot produce copious amounts of rainfall, dangerous flash flooding, mudslides, and tornadoes. So... I kind of want to hit that home there. Just there's a lot of uncertainties going forward in time and a lot of things that can still change between now and Tuesday. So again, just kind of heed the advice of your local weather service office and of course the National Hurricane Center. All right, with that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your evening.
I will be back with more for you tomorrow. All right. With that being said, have a great evening. This is Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow afternoon.